So we've been talking about carboxylic acid derivatives. Uh, they have a carbonyl group in them. And let's take a look. I just want to remind you, we've been over this, but again, let's take a look at the electrophilicity of the carbonyl carbon of uh, some carbonyl car containing compounds. Uh, so all of the carboxylic acid derivatives have an electronegative atom attached to carbon, at least relative to carbon. So oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. Um, nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon, and chlorine is more electronegative than carbon. Now, we might expect then that all of them would be more reactive because we're pulling away this electron density uh, via the electronegativity. That is, chlorine is hogging the electrons in this carbon-chlorine uh, bond, and that is the case. But in the case of esters and amides, we can draw a resonance structure. It's not a real good resonance structure, but we can move these electrons into the carbon-oxygen double bond and promote these up here and get a resonance structure that looks like this. And it does contribute some, and that's a, a stabilizing interaction because we're pushing electron density into that electrophilic center, making it less electrophilic. Nitrogen is a very good resonance donor, uh, and so nitrogen contributes significantly more of this resonance structure to the real structure of this carbonyl containing group, the, the amide. Uh, and in fact, we saw in the NMR that there's even restricted rotation about that carbon nitrogen bond, which indicates that there's quite a bit of double bond character. For the carbon chlorine, there is lone pairs of electrons there, and we might expect that they could donate in there, and we could draw a resonance structure similar to these. The difference is that the electrons uh, in the n orbital of the chlorine are in a 3p orbital, and the empty orbital that we would donate them into uh, would, in the sp hybridized carbon uh, in this resonance structure would be a 2p orbital. So there's that good overlap between 3p and 2p orbitals. So that resonance contributor doesn't contribute very much. And hence, we can explain to some extent why carbon carboxylic acid chlorides are quite a bit more reactive than esters or amides. Uh, so let's take a look at our order of reactivity towards nucleophiles for carbonyl uh, containing groups and we see that the carboxylic acid halides are the most reactive followed by the carboxylic acid anhydrides this is an electron withdrawing group uh, combined with oxygen's uh, electron withdrawing ability now if we draw the resonance structure where we donate that lone pair of electrons to make a carbon oxygen bond well then we make this one more uh, electrophilic and if we draw so that we have the double bond there we make this one more electrophilic so the symmetry of the carboxylic acid and hydride means that uh, we can draw these different resonance structures but there's still quite a bit of electrophilic character at that carbonyl carbon the aldehydes are more reactive than the ketones by virtue of the accessibility and the, the small hydrogen relative to a larger alkyl group so nucleophiles can better approach the carbonyl carbon uh, also carbon is slightly electron donating relative to hydrogen so that would have a tendency to stabilize these and the esters and the amides are the least reactive of this series of carbonyl compounds we see here towards uh, nucleophilic attack at the carbonyl carbon. Now, one of the things that's different, the aldehyde and the ketones, uh, they don't undergo nucleophilic acyl substitution because they have terrible leaving groups. When we form the tetrahedral intermediate, uh, in order for this to leave, it would have to leave as an H-, minus, which is a very high energy species. This would have to leave as a carbanion. There'd be a negative charge on the carbon. So also not a very good leaving group. So even though these are more susceptible to attack by nucleophiles, we don't get the same results. We did see that with aldehydes and ketones. We can form hydrates. We can make acetals. We can react them with amines to form either amines or enamines. But we don't have that nucleophilic acyl substitution reactivity. We cannot substitute that hydrogen or that alkyl group with another nucleophile. So this order of reactivity is something that we need to be aware of, uh, particularly if we have molecules, which has 
have more than one functional group. So here we see a ketone carbonyl and a carboxylic acid chloride carbonyl. This is quite a bit more electrophilic. So if we tried to react this with an alcohol, it would react very rapidly there. Uh, and in fact, if we were trying to protect our carbonyl group so we could do some chemistry here, we wouldn't be able to do it because this is so much more reactive. We would form the esters and then there's that alcohol on the other side would react with another molecule of the carboxylic acid chloride to form our diesters. If on the other hand, we had this ketone functionality with an ester group over here, this is the better electrophile and we can, we can actually protect it. We can react it with this ethylene glycol and form this stable acetal species. Then we could go on and do some chemistry at the other carbonyl group because this is no longer a carbonyl group. It's easily revertible back to a carbonyl group. All we have to do is use acidic and uh, aqueous conditions, throw a bunch of water in there, and that would push this reaction over to this side. So we can protect uh, keto esters uh, and amides, but we cannot protect keto acid chlorides or anhydrides. So another way to remember this order of reactivity, uh, the more reactive compounds actually have the better leaving groups, okay? So uh, the more basic or nucleophilic the leaving group is, the, the poorer it is as a leaving group and the better it is when it's attached at stabilizing that carbonyl carbon. So these are the least reactive electrophiles these are the most reactive electrophiles. Conversely, these are the most reactive bases and or nucleophiles, and these are the least reactive bases and or nucleophiles. So we've already talked about the fact that this is important. We can make any of the lesser reactive carboxylic acid chlorides from the more reactive derivative. So we can make carboxylic anhydrides from acid chlorides, but we can't make uh, anhydrides from esters or amides. We can make esters from uh, anhydrides and chlorides, but it's very difficult to make them from amides. We actually do have a trick where we can do it, but it, but it doesn't give us high yields and we have to do it under special conditions. The other thing that points to the very electrophilic nature of the carboxylic acid chlorides is how rapidly they hydrolyze. So water is a decent enough nucleophile and it will react very rapidly with carboxylic acid chlorides. In fact, so really rapidly that these are hard to isolate. We, we have to keep them under very dry conditions. Typically we'll uh, degas our solutions with a dry uh, nitrogen or argon uh, or even helium to make sure that there's no water around because that would react very rapidly. The anhydrides react fairly rapidly. Uh, they're a little bit more stable. Esters are very stable towards water. Even under acidic conditions, they can be quite stable. They do hydrolyze, uh, but it takes, takes quite a while. So a, a very common solvent, in fact, is ethyl acetate. It has a lot of properties that makes it a convenient solvent. Uh, uh, although they are somewhat reactive and we have to be a little bit careful. Uh, amides are very stable, as we've already discussed in class. This is one of the reasons why we have this amide linkage or peptide bond, as the biochemists call it, uh, that makes up our proteins. Uh, if we were made from esters, we would be hydrolyzable uh, and we don't want that. And Amides are very stable towards uh, hydrolysis. They do not hydrolyze very easily. We have to not only, we have to do it under quite harsh conditions. We have to have acid or, or, or base, and we have to add a lot of heat in order to hydrolyze an amide. So let's take a look at the hydrolysis of acid anhydrides. Our water acts as the nucleophile and it just attacks one of the carbonyl carbons, uh, forming our tetrahedral intermediate. Our tetrahedral intermediate can go back by kicking off water, or we can kick off the uh, carboxylate. That's quite stable. If we're in an organic solvent, that is 
basic enough in an organic solvent to pull the proton off of uh, this quite acidic species and we end up making two of the carboxylic acids. Even under aqueous conditions we would have predominantly uh, strong aqueous conditions because we are doing a hydrolysis but we would have predominantly the carboxylic acid. So take a look at the hydrolysis of an acyl chloride. It's exactly the same. The only difference here is our leaving group is a chloride rather than uh, a carboxylate anion. So same thing, uh, water acts as a nucleophile, it attacks the carbonyl carbon. We form our tetrahedral intermediate. It could go back, but it can go forward by kicking off chloride instead of water. Uh, when it kicks off that, we just have a protonated carboxylic acid. Something will come along and pull that proton off. Uh, typically, it's not going to be chloride uh, under aqueous conditions. Uh, HCl is a strong acid and completely dissociates, so it's likely another water, water, molecule of water that comes along and pulls the proton off of that protonated species. So the reactivity of these carboxylic acids is something that we want to remember, uh, and we can easily make carboxylic acid chlorides using one of these strong reagents. And once we make that, we then have a route to make any of the other carboxylic acid uh, derivatives. Now, we can make esters from acyl chlorides. Remember the mechanism for the hydrolysis? All we're going to do to make an ester is replace one of the hydrogens with an R group. And we see that the mechanism is exactly the same. So this is a very common mechanism. Uh, whether we have water or an alcohol, we have that lone pair of electrons on the oxygen, which can pull off that, I'm sorry, which can attack the very reactive electrophilic carbon of the carbonyl group of an acid chloride, form our tetrahedral intermediate, kick off a chloride. Now we just have a protonated ester. Something comes along and pulls that proton off, and we get our ester as product. So we can uh, also use anhydrides to make esters or amides uh, because they're lower, they're more stable, so we can easily make esters and amides from the anhydride. Uh, just want to talk about esters a little bit. Cyclic esters, we call them lactones, and they're made by reacting a carboxylic acid with, instead of another molecule of alcohol, the alcohol function is on another part of the molecule. So esters that form five and six membered rings are particularly stable uh, and we can uh, undergo this cyclization reaction to form our stable, this is a delta lactone because the hydroxyl group is on the delta carbon, the alpha, beta, gamma, delta. A gamma lactone would be a five membered ring and in that case the hydroxyl group would be on the gamma carbon. So they're quite stable because uh, we can hydrolyze them, but when they ring open, they can easily go back because the alcohol can't diffuse away. It's right there all the time. Uh, so if we, we can hydrolyze these under basic conditions, and if we want to capture the carboxylic acid, we have to be very careful when we protonate this carboxylate so that we only have uh, exactly one equivalent. Once we go to a little bit more, we start protonating the uh, carbonyl oxygen of the carboxylic acid, and that just leads to lactone formation again. So uh, they're quite stable. We can make the uh, gamma and delta hydroxy acids. Uh, but we have to be careful not to have any uh, excess acid around, and which is kind of hard too because here we have an acid right here. Uh, it's a weak acid, uh, but it can facilitate that ring closure. We do find these in nature. Notice uh, vitamin C. Uh, there's our, it's a gamma lactone. Now, this functionality here, an enol, we can actually draw what's called a tautomer by taking that proton and moving it 
uh, over to here, and then we would have a carbonyl group there. That's a that's called tautomerization. So that's it for this video. Uh, the next video we're going to start taking a look at amides and how we can make amides from as acyl chlorides, acid hen, hydrides, or esters.